what are eight important elements for slide masters in consulting? Hi everyone, my name is Johannes, I'm a strategy consultant and on this channel I share my thoughts, learnings and experiences about consulting, business and mindset. If you're new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe to it, also leave a thumb up, this would really support the channel and help the channel to grow. And today we talk about power present, uh, PowerPoint presentations, we talk about how to set up and what are the important elements of a PowerPoint slide master if you work in consulting. To do that and to discuss that, I have a slide master prepared that I want to talk about. And basically, there are eight things that you should consider. Before we talk about that, let's first talk about why consulting masters are so important. So first of all, if you have a good master management, then it will make your life much easier because there you have the default slides that you use in consulting. So this means that every time you build a presentation, you can select a pre-selected slide and depending on how you could set up this pre-selected slide, you know, the more efficient you are obviously if you build your slides. And therefore it's very important to make it a habit that before you work with a new PowerPoint master, maybe if you stuffed on a new project and then the client has a new master, that you always do a double check and check, you know, if the eight things that we talk about are reflected in the slide master and otherwise you have to change it. So with that being said, let's jump into the eight different points. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the background color. So I always recommend that you have a white background color. I know there are some firms, you know, this was kind of very trendy in the past years, especially in the startup sector, where they have a colored background, like maybe they use a very slight gray, okay, or maybe a very light tone just to make it look more fancy. But first of all, it's very difficult sometimes if you print out those slides, then it can be a problem because you don't see the colors properly. And also every color on the slide distracts from the main message. So make it a habit to have white um, uh, backgrounds and you can simply change that by, you know, a right click and then formatting background. The second thing I want to talk about is that you have to include action titles. And I would always recommend to have a two row action title. So some slide decks only have one row of action title. If that's the case, I would extend it a little bit because what you want to do is that you have some space for doing two lines and action titles because you know, sometimes you want to have a little bit more text in the slides. And that's why I recommend to have at least two lines of space for your action title. Then you also want to have a chapter tracker. And this is the box that you see here above that, um, here in the light gray. So you want to have that particularly if you work on larger presentations where you have a lot of chapters, then those chapter trackers are really important and really helpful to give the audience an orientation where we are in the presentation. Then of course, we want to have a footer. The footer typically includes a space for footnotes, a, a space for the presentation name and the slide numbers. Uh, I like to have those three items uh, aligned also again here in a lighter gray and make sure that those items are included because if you include footnotes, you always want to have that on the same uh, line. Also, it helps to include a presentation name, especially, you know, um, if you send out a lot of presentations, then it just helps, you know, to have an orientation where we are. And obviously slide numbers are also very important. Then don't forget about the logo. I have <laughs> included the logo of my own channel here on the top right. It really doesn't matter if it's on the top right or uh, on the bottom left. The only thing that's important is that it's not somewhere in the middle where it distracts or where it, you know, uh, removes some valuable space on the slide. So I think, you know, it's okay to put it somewhere where it's not, you know, um, taking too much space, but it's still there to see. Then of course, um, another thing is that you should make sure that the colors are pre-adjusted. And this means that the color setting or the color pre-setting of your PowerPoint master reflects the corporate identity colors of your client or of your firm you're working for. And to change that, it's very simple. You can go to colors and then customize colors 
and then you see all the different colors and you can change them like the different accents and so on. I won't do that here because it's already pretty good pre-adjusted, but sometimes you know it helps to go into that master format and change the colors. And the two last things I want to talk about are the guidelines. And if I include the guides here, then you will see that on the first view it looks quite busy but there is a system to it and there are two things i want to talk about first of all and this is um those are the blue guidelines here you see it here on the right side then here on the right side and here on the top and here on the bottom and those are the guidelines for the general frame of the slide this is where the main content should be and you know in most powerpoint slide decks and powerpoint masters those guidelines are already pre um, um preset what I want to say here, what is really important based on my opinion is that the distance between the border of the slide and the guideline on the left side and on the right side, they should be the same because the thing is you want to have your slide look very sim uh, symmetrically. Okay. And if you want to align some slides on the center, for example, if you want to create a slide where you have on the left side, one half and on the right side, another half then the slide looks much more symmetrically if the guidelines have the same distance to the border. Because imagine if you had here the guideline, you know, much more exa exaggerate now, much more to the right, then the middle of those two blue lines would be somewhere here in the right or third. And obviously, you know, this would kind of skew your um, illustration and you don't want to do that. So make sure that the distance between the border and the first guideline here is the same. And this is the blue guideline and on those are the blue guidelines, the general frame. Then there are, is another concept that I want to talk about, the second point regarding guidelines. And there's a principle in consulting that says if you build slides, then you should think in thirds or in quarters. And this means that your slide looks much more appealing if you divide your slide into thirds or quarters and this basically means that if we insert here a um, chart for example this basically means that if you included here um, a chart then it looks much more appealing if you divide that for example into thirds like that okay or if you think in quarters so that you have an illustration where you say okay you have a principle that is half half. So on the left side, there's one half and on the right side, the other one. And this is exactly something that you can do or that you can draw very easily by using guidelines. So if you take a closer look, then you see that those orange guidelines here are adjusted in a way that all the orange lines combined with the blue lines, they result in thirds. So here's the one third, here's the next one, then the next one. So we have nine boxes in the whole square and this makes it easier because i if i now want to say okay i want to have a one-third two-third illustration as we just saw it's very easy to do that if you work on a slide it's the pretty same if we talk about quarters here you have to take a look at the red lines so you have the blue lines again for the big frame and then you see that the one red line is exactly the half of the slide then one quarter is the other one the other one and we have the same in uh, with the horizontal lines and again here it's very simple if i do a slide that is a half half or one quarter three quarters um, or something like that then it's very very easy to build those slides and you will see if you pre-adjust those guidelines this will make your slide building process much more efficient and your slides will automatically look much more uh, you know symmetrical much better to the audience because you automatically apply this one third at uh, this uh, third or quarter logic to your slide building process good of course i want to know what kind of other tips you have that you want to share with the community so please write it down in the comments if this brought value to you then please like this channel and uh, like this video sorry and subscribe to this channel and um, if you have any questions then just reach out to me via Instagram or here in the comments. And with that being said, I wish you a very successful day. Hope to talk to you soon. Goodbye, Johannes.